right, we're back with Covered with the Utah FOP. I am your host, Brett Rawson, here with uh, Kevin and Brent, as usual. But we also brought a friend today through the magic of technology. Uh, we're here with Casey Roussel from Fusion Stack, And uh, he's here today to talk to us about the flagship product, Cloud Gavel, from Fusion Stack. And be, before uh, we introduce Casey, uh, I just want to I want to say you know I've been on those calls where it's three o'clock in the morning maybe it's a uh, DUI maybe the suspect isn't being cooperative maybe whoa, 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 whoa. yeah can what you alternate can you, university you, living in? can you imagine that they <laughs> sometimes it happens that when the police make a request people don't say automatically sure I would love to. Uh, blow in the breathalyzer or give you my bodily uh, fluids. Perhaps you didn't attend verbal judo. I, yes. d- you know, I, I once didn't. I did. Yeah, it changed never everything. Never had a problem. Really? Or the tell me more. Pretty please with sugar on top, <laughs> which yeah. I believe somebody uttered on our shift, didn't they, Trav? Didn't we have a pretty please? Pretty I imagine. Please request? I, I could imagine who that might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, it just so happened that I have found myself in occasions where I have needed a warrant and long enough ago that I had to drive up the hill, drive up the driveway, knock on the door and wake up the judge. Can you imagine? That happened in the modern era. And guess what? Not always were those judges happy to see me. Now, (laughs) I recognize- Or home. (laughs) Or home, yeah. Hello. Or had pants on. (laughs) Or had pants on. But but that's that's where uh, that's where you know we'll segue into Fusion Stack. They have a solution. And uh, Casey, tell us tell us more about your company and uh, the fantastic product Cloud Gabble. Yeah, thanks guys. Greatly appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Um, yeah, we started just basically trying to solve a problem. Uh, we had never, this was way back 2007. Uh, we were doing some other things with technology and just in a conversation with one of our local sheriffs uh, around Christmas time, he was uh, kind of flustered because he was chasing a suspect that had actually shot at police and he was inside of a house and they needed a warrant to go in and get him and they couldn't find a judge to sign it um, with it. So, you know, we we looked at the situation and just thought, wow, this is kind of a dumb problem to have. Um, and at that time, we didn't know a whole lot about the warrant law. So we researched it, looked into it, um, saw that there was some gaps in the law back then oh, for the electronic signing of laws. You needed an actual pen to paper uh, with it. So we came up with the idea, let's see if we can kind of solve this problem uh, at the local level. Uh, we worked with the legislators here in Louisiana, got those laws passed. Uh, in 2008, uh, we went live with the first iteration um, of our system. We were running it out of the you know garage of my grandfather's house here, uh, trying to make it work. And, and all these years later, uh, we're now the largest electronic warrant system in the country. We kind of always say we've been through hell and back uh, through the process of, of building this and growing it and figuring out different ways to do it. But you know, you're right. We looked at it from the officer standpoint of how much time was wasted just driving back and forth and waiting for judges and going and make copies and all of that uh, with it. So we wanted to find a way to eliminate that without affecting the actual rules and procedures around getting those warrants signed and make sure that not only we gave the efficiency to the the courts and the law enforcement agencies, but we also found out that it was extraordinarily important to bring a level of transparency to the public as well. Whereas in the old days, with pen and paper, it was great you were before a judge, but you really had no way to actually attest what happened and when it happened, right? Well, now with technology, we've got very detailed audit trails down to the second of who's doing what, when they're doing it, where they're doing it from, that really brings uh, the question of, all right, was the proper procedures followed? Okay, we've taken that argument out. So now it's all about the substance of the warrant, not so much about the process in it. So it's come full circle, and I think we've done a, a pretty good job of bringing value to both sides. Great, and uh, you've been at it 17 years, I think you said, and and uh, 20,000 warrants through the system each uh, week? Month. Each month. month. Each okay, month. Each month, wow. yep. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, it's, that's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, well, 17 states uh, and growing every day. So, um, yeah, that's that's the goal. Our, our mission was to try, was try to get it 
in every state uh and you know we're on the way yeah we need to push for is utah on there because we need to push for that we're here in the great state of utah and if it's not here boy we need to uh, take some action get it rolling yeah i'm not sure um We've got one a, state had some type of internal system. I'm not sure if Utah was one that Utah, had one or not. Yeah, uh, we um, got e warrants through our. Uh, uh, I think it's through BCI, isn't it? Yeah, it's through BCI. Um, in fact, that's what I was doing right when when I rushed in here with my computer. I was submitting in a, an e warrant. So yeah, and we've got, but we've got. I'm told we have listeners all over the world. I can't believe why. It's incredible to me, but. From uh, from Australia to Ireland and points in between. So Canada. Yeah, yeah, Canada. It's a country up north. I've Canada, British Columbia, or not British Columbia. That's part of it's Canada. It's one of the same. Yeah, I, I was thinking across the <laughs> another country. The UK, like, like yeah, Texas. The, UK. Yeah. the British of the British. <laughs> the British. Yeah. The British yeah. Of the British. So so listen, I'm, I uh, I know we have listeners out there that could uh, appreciate this technology and. Uh, Again, um, we appreciate you being here to explain uh, what you do and all about Fusion Stack and Cloud Gavel. Casey, is there uh, a way to get in touch with the company? Yeah, the easiest way is just to go to our website, fusionstack.com, and uh, the stack is spelled with no C, so F U S I O N S T A K dot com. And you can also go to cloudgavel.com, and it'll take you to the same stuff. Um, and on there, you can schedule demos, you can reach out to us, and um, we can respond accordingly. So that's probably the easiest way. Um, we're also on LinkedIn and I think Facebook as well. But uh, the majority of our stuff from social media side uh, is pushed out through LinkedIn. What well, uh, what part of Louisiana are you, are you in? We've got some Baton friends Rouge. in Louisiana. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, okay. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've got friends down there. Yeah, we got, uh, let's see, is it Pineville? Mm. Pineville? Where's, uh, Where's Pat from? Well, Pat's that's from New Orleans. Orleans. Okay. Um, yeah. But... Ron is. We were we were in uh, Louisiana not all that long ago. We had a big con, uh, yeah convention out there. Yeah, 2019. Is that when it was? It was before the 2019, pandemic. 2019, and then right. it was right before the pandemic, and then we were there in 2005, right just a couple of weeks before Katrina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it down there. Always something good to eat in Louisiana. Yeah, it's it's hard to be on a diet down here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Casey. Uh, we appreciate you and uh, everything that you're working on there at Fusion Stack. And uh, uh, don't be uh, a stranger. We'll. Uh, what's that? We're gonna keep it going for. Oh, a are bit. we? Yeah. Are you staying with us, Casey? That's good. I I thought it was just uh, hit it and quit it, but uh, they tell me that uh, you're gonna be here a minute. That's good. Fantastic. I'll stay as long as you guys need me and want any information. <laughs> good. Good. So, what's your uh, t- What's your tie into um, into law enforcement? Do you have family, friends, you yourself? Yeah, so when I got out of, actually when in college, I was interning with one of the sheriffs in IT and finance. And um, I don't know, it just, I, I guess that's where it started uh, with it. Kind of coincidentally just saw a problem and said, let's fix it. I guess if we had to do it all over again, um, I'm not sure we would, looking back. Um, uh, it's like I put the effort into more of something that's, uh, you know, commercially available as opposed to dealing with state and local government. But, but no, we, we always had a passion um, for law enforcement and public safety. Um, a lot of my family is in it. Uh, several of the people that came work for us is from law enforcement. Um, and we just saw the tremendous, I mean, if you ever spent, what you guys have, spent one day in court, all of the inefficiencies just like smack you right in the face. So we're constantly trying to figure out, okay, how now with technology, how can we use that to make the whole process more efficient um, and more effective for everyone that's involved with it um, is really become a, a true goal of us. And then secondly, you know, how do we educate the public on reality versus what they see on TV? Um, Because a lot of times they live their lives, the public lives their lives, they make decisions and assumptions about law enforcement and the criminal justice system based on what they see on CSI and all these shows. And it's like, no, that's not reality of how it works. Um, So a big part of our mission now is to, you know, do shows like this, do podcasts and go on and just kind of explain to the public, hey, this is reality. This is what these men and women really go through to get the job done. It's not as simple as sitting at a desk, clicking a button and all the answers pop up on the screen. So, um, yeah, we've we've, if only. we've got yeah, we've got quite a passion for, um, you know, the whole system. 
you know that was one of the things that uh, that I thought was really interesting <clears throat> with all the technology that we've got how inefficient government still is you know and all the things that they're okay so in case you brought up the uh, stuff like CSI and those shows <coughs> the crazy thing is that why, why can't it be like that you know like what's the what are the big hurdles that are keeping that information from being rapidly available and you know and being able to intertwine and you know information and data and and all those things to where it is you know solve a solve a big crime in 44 minutes you know what uh what do you see from the from the tech side that stands in the way of that well a, a lot of it is our process and, and in a perfect world we wouldn't need some of the processes but unfortunately we don't live in a perfect world you know one of the scenarios is where you'll see the you know the officer sitting at the computer and they spit out a name all of a sudden they know the cell phone number and in two seconds they can tell you where the cell phone is at and it's like no you need warrants for all of that like and then you got to deal with carriers and you got to deal with all of this stuff to get that information back um to do it you know especially at a local level um you know so a lot of things like that now would it be great if a cop can sit there and tell you exactly where someone is yes but uh, again do we do we really want that power in the hands of every single cop or do we want our due process to go through and have a judge say yes there's a reason why you need to have that um so technology i don't think is a, a technical barrier in, in a lot of cases it's it's our processes right and from the government side they're not like business where time is money for us you know so the more efficient we are you know, the better we are as a company, whereas in government, it's government money. They've got no incentive to be quick. They've got no incentive to speed the process up, um, you know, with it. So that's, I think it's more of the, the process barrier with it, of getting through some of that technology is helping, making it more available with it. Um, and then a lot of the places that have the data, the Facebooks, the Metas, the Instagrams of the world, as you guys know, as cops, they're not the easiest companies to deal with either of getting data from them. So you're fighting them to say, all right, this is why I need it. And it's important to this case. Um, they don't care if you solve your case or not. They're worried about their revenue um, from their end uh, on it. So uh, it's kind of a combination of things, but we're getting there because uh, technology is allowing us to put some pretty good security measures in place of who's doing what and when they're doing it from the officer side and transparency. And now the speed of technology, you can move data back and forth very quickly as opposed to before with waiting on mail, waiting on uh, things of that nature. So it's getting better, but we still have a major process issue. You know, so. that's how I, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, I this is what uh, I, I decided to go with iPhone and Verizon for a very good reason. Oh yeah. Because when uh, we were working some wire cases and it was, impossible to one it was impossible to get into an iPhone and impossible to get any valuable information from from Verizon I mean it was like do a ping and they're like yeah um, they're probably in line of sight if you're on top of a building you know we'll <laughs> tell not you that, even that, that they're, anymore they're, they're within <laughs> like 30 3600 meters uh, maybe yeah and so I was like it was very frustrating as an investigator but I'm like Okay, but that's what I want for for me personally, right? You know. But I will say this: I I do appreciate the uh, the work that you've done to make it an easier thing to get warrants uh, approved online, um, because I I have to write warrants in the federal system and I have to do it on the local side. And the local side, I get to do e warrants and it's fifteen minutes and you're done, versus a federal warrant that takes about a week to get it done. Mm. And uh, you know we have officers that are out on the street trying to do things and there are warrantless exceptions to searching um, but since the induction of, of e-warrants we're not really exploring those too much anymore because why would you risk losing your case when you can do the 15 minute e-warrant even yep. if it means it's in the middle of the night and you're waking up a judge which I've done many times and it's not too fun but yeah. But you, you, you're protecting those rights of the citizens, mm -hmm. and I, I appreciate that. It does build a stronger due process protection. Yeah, yeah and, I, 
Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna no, say, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, once upon a time, at the beginning of my career, I uh, visited the Supreme Court. I say visited the Supreme Court of the United States because I, it was so early in my career, I could not be sworn into the court. So you have to be a lawyer for three years before you're allowed to become a member of, of the court. And uh, But the case was Pearson v. Callahan, and uh, it was a case about uh, something known as consent once removed. And what that means is you got a CI that goes into... This is the Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? <laughs> well, we're not going to talk about the dirty things that were said <laughs> as, as a result of the facts of that case. But uh, because, you know, because your mother is still listening <laughs> to this, Brent. But uh, yeah, the, the case was about going in um, as a CI and whether inviting that CI into the, uh, you know, to the house was also inviting the police. And the question that was asked, um, I can't remember which justice asked the question to my then uh, boss at that time. At that time, Brent, I had a boss. I know it's hard to believe, but I did. He was a yeah, very- her name's, her name's Jen. <laughs> well, I still have that boss. <laughs> but look, the, uh, the, the court asked uh, the attorney arguing, why didn't you just get an electronic warrant? Because you know the argument was they're out in the middle of nowhere, it's a trailer park, it's middle of the night. Well, this would have solved all those problems. We wouldn't have to have spent half a million dollars to go to SCOTUS. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, intrigued. What by, year was uh, that? Uh, so long ago, I can't remember. Let's see, it was 2009-ish, somewhere in there. So right about the beginning of, because you launched the product, Casey, in 2008. Was that when you first? Yes, 2008. Well, fantastic. I mean, this would this is uh, answer to prayers because at that yeah. time, you know, there was just really no easy way to deal with things. Where you're like, e warrant? What? <laughs> what is what, this e what the that you're talking e about? <laughs> well, there's still states that don't have it. I I was talking yeah. to some coll colleagues in <clears throat> in Nevada, and yeah, they uh, same thing. They're like, what do you mean you can write your warrants online? And I'm like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nevada's uh is unique. So we've got all of DPS and we got Vegas and some of there, but it's amazing. It's South Nevada to Northern Nevada is like two different worlds, um, you, you know, with it, but most states are like that uh, with at least the laws allow it there. I think Mississippi is going to be the last state uh, in July. Their laws are finally going to be updated to allow for electronic signing of uh, criminal documents um, with it. So I think every other state now does allow it. So it'll be every state, that, that at least accepts it. That's great. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things that we've seen that's, you know, how this product evolves and how the solution evolves over time is that, you know, when it started, it was about, okay, how can we just eliminate some travel time? We're now with the way the technology works and you're, you're saving all the data with inside of the warrant. So, it, you know, you got the names and the addresses and all of that stuff. But now it's coming to a point where when an officer, let's just say wants to do an arrest warrant, they can run the name in the system through DMV. They can populate everything about that individual. They can populate the addresses. They can populate vehicles that are associated with it. So when that warrant is now live, it's not just I'm looking for that warrant. Now any other officer that is working a case on that same vehicle on a, an affiliated address on that individual you have all of this deconfliction going on where the, it's tying these agencies together whereas warrants and all the, the data on the warrants was stuck in some filing cabinet somewhere and no one really knew about it unless it was encountered through ncic um, as you know not everything makes it in the NC, ncic so at least with what how the technology is improving nowadays we are tying all of these agencies together all of these documents together the probable causes are now searchable um, with it so if, if i'm an officer and i'm working a case i can just type in i'm looking for a blue f-150 with 10 windows and now it's searching every warrant it's searching every probable cause it's searching all of that to try to make connections for officers on cases that they're working on so the sharing of that data is really becoming now the most valuable part of the whole system. Um, yeah, you know, with Woods does that. For no, us. definitely yeah. not. I, when's it going <laughs> to be? This would be an upgrade. Yeah, when's it going to be like Kit from Knight Rider? I'm I'm waiting for those days when I can just talk to my car. Is that coming? <laughs> yeah, you just hit the little button on the it's, thing. I, and... <laughs> I, I tell you, it's funny with with AI. It's um, there's a lot of cool things that's that's being talked about. Uh, 
um, win it. But really, it's about the connection. Um, we're working really hard to soon get connected to um, to Index. We're connected to NC and I, I see stuff. But if we can connect to Index at the FBI, now you just have you almost have a Google for law enforcement that you're going to be able to query all of these things. Um, and the AI is going to run on top of the data to say, all right, how can I go find connections? How can I answer questions that the officers aren't even thinking about asking yet? How can I look at everything and start putting some of these puzzle pieces together? And, and the key is not that the, the officer is just going to take the technology and go act. No, this is to give information to the officers to say, all right, let me look at it and let me make a, an educated right smart decision based on the data i'm looking at whether it's a possible suspect that i need to look at or i'm excluding a suspect based on the data but the key is to get as much data in front of the officer as possible so they can make the right decision the first time in quick time um, instead of taking weeks months sometimes years to to put things together that's fascinating yeah the future is super super cool yeah i like it yeah and what's scary is you can do it all from a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, uh, fantastic. Uh, again, uh, appreciate you being here and appreciating all the listeners out there. Uh, we know that you're listening, many of you from patrol cars and uh, on shift all over uh, the country and in other countries. And uh, we know what you're doing and we appreciate what you're doing. And we want you to stay safe. And as always, uh, we, we are thinking about you and we care about you. And um, be safe out there. Thank you.